All right, guys, it's that video again. Is it worth farming a world spanning arc like the SSSS Gridman collaboration with Azure Lane? The one and only anime special with mechas and big booba thigh girl. Is it worth farming for? Let's get started. So, as always, let's start with the end game players. The end game players, is this worth farming for? Unless you really want the gear skins here, and there's a wide variety of gear skins for you to go through here. We got some, um, I don't know what these are. Rock, we have rockets here, we have some planes, we have some other stuff. I don't know what this is. It's like, is that chat? Oh, it's a glow stick? I, I don't know what it is. Someone can probably tell me what it is, though. But there's a wide variety here. If you guys want the gear skins, then it's probably worth farming for. So go ahead. If you want the gear skins, go ahead and farm them. Now, the issue is I'm not sure if gear skins are the same rates throughout each of these worlds. I assume they are. Um, if that's the case, then I would probably farm like maybe tier one or tier two if you want just pure gear skins. But again, a lot of us want points. So if we want the points to get put to buy stuff from the shop, and there's much more things to buy in the shop this time around because there's all these auxiliaries and we have cog arrays now. Um, farm tier 4. You're going to have to farm tier 4. Now in terms of gear or whatever, probably not worth it because the best gear here uh, for this collaboration is going to be that hood gun, the 381s. Uh, there's multiple ways to obtain these. There's research. I think you can craft them in gear labs. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Maybe. Okay. Just gear labs. But, or not your last research, but you get a lot of them in research, so it's not that big of an issue. There's also uh, a few better options out there compared to the hood gun that you don't really have to commit farming for. So it's kind of up to you if you want to farm for the hood guns or not. I personally think that if you are an endgame player, you shouldn't go ahead and farm these because there's better options. You're probably, you probably outscale these guns by a far margin. Not to mention... With the uh, updates to World Nine or whatever, these used to this used to be one of my favorite guns to use in World uh, Seven Two to farm for question mark nodes, but because Seven Two is basically dead now, um, yeah, there's not much value from this gun anymore. But there are still some mobs in like the future worlds that have like light armor and whatnot that you can use this gun for, but in terms of like overall value, it's not that much because. You mainly just use this gun because it's fast. And when you're farming 7-2, you shoot really fast, but you also kill. Since the enemies at 7-2 are very, very low and very, very uh, squishy. So this gun right here, even though it doesn't do a lot of damage, it's fast. And when you're farming a low-level world, it's really, really good. Now that we have, um, now that world 12 is basically like the best place to farm now, uh, enemies are tankier. You're not going to get that much value from this gun anymore. It's fast, but it's not going to do like super heavy damage compared to like, say, the Odin's gun and PR3 or whatever. That's HE. Yeah, this gun right here has dropped off quite a lot. So if you're an endgame player, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you really want this gun, go ahead and farm for it. Now, mid-game players. Is this worth it to you? Like, same thing as the endgame players. If you need the hood guns, then go ahead and use them. These are fast guns. The fa one of the fastest in the game as of right now. Uh, heavy, uh, not heavy armor, uh, high explosives. So if you want these guns, it's probably worth getting. Also the gear skins as well too. Also a nice thing and whatnot. And whatchamacallit. So if you want that, go ahead and do it. As for early game players, now this event may be kind of tricky for you guys to, uh, T4 kind of uh, threw me off when I was going for my all clear or uh, my initial clears because the mobs are pretty annoying. There's also submarines as well too in tier 4. So if you're struggling with tier 4, farm the uh, earlier maps. But I would recommend farming tier 4 because or uh, T4 because there is a chance to get the uh, Chisei drop. Which is a very, very good ship from this collaboration. It's a preload. Uh... The third preload carrier in the game as of right now. So if you really want that Chisei, and I rec I rec or Chisa, my bad. If you really want her um, from the shop or from the drops or whatever, go ahead and farm tier 4. So I also want to mention that this event is quote unquote the first big event. Well, the big depends on how you see it. So I count this as like a big event because it has like an actual big shop here. 
is the actual first big event with clearing mode. So clearing mode here unlocks when you have this map clear, like whatever map it says cleared right here. You get that clear for a few times and you get this. And you have the clearing cost. So the clearing cost here is going to be 6 fights plus a 30 for the boss and entry of 10. So there's a total of 160 oil for um, 180 points. That is well below the threshold that I used to follow with. Uh, that I used to follow when I used to farm a uh, a lot of events in this game. Uh, you want to keep a one to one ratio, one oil for one point. So if you're farming like say D three in the other events, and you have that um, one to one oil cost, you want 180 oil minimum or around there for 180 points. Now that clearing mode is added here, it is now 160 oil for 180 points. So when you guys get to that clearing mode stage, slot in every single ship you have to get EXP. Also, make your it'll make your life easier because you don't have to think about team compositions anymore. Just toss in whatever ships you have, and it should work out. It should work out. So when you guys get to that point, don't have to worry about oil efficiency. Just toss in all the ships you have. Because for 160 oil, that is very cheap for 180 points. That's very, very good. So, let's talk about the supplies, the shop, and whatnot. As always, um, highest priority this time around, aside from the limited stuff right here, is going to be the cargo rays. The cargo rays here, there's 50 of them. These are very, very limited. There's not many of them in the game. It's still a fresh resource to many people, and you're going to need a lot of them, trust me. So, highest priority right here is going to be the Kaga Rays. Now, depending on what kind of player you are, um, if you're an absolute end game player, uh, Cog Chips right now are going to be one of the resources you need. Notice how the first thing I bought in this shop are those Cog Chips. So, if you're at that stage of the game, Cog Chips are going to be super, super important. Grab those immediately. Now, after that, it's up to you what you want. want, want. I always recommend people get the UR. Uh, the UR prints because a lot of you guys are struggling getting them for whatever reason. We have so much gold nowadays that you can just pay for uh, coin researches nonstop, and you should be getting uh, a lot more UR prints compared to before. But if you're one of those players that just lack them for whatever reason, it's hard to get them. Go ahead and grab these SSRs. Up to you if you want to grab them. It'll make your life easier on getting UR prints. Once you cap them at developer 30, they stop showing up for D missions. So it'll make your life easier getting UR prints if you cap out those SSR developer uh, 30 ships for SSRs to get those UR prints and whatnot. SSR cap box, always good on gambling for good lines, that is, and whatnot. Now, aside from the essentials, the place and whatnot, everything, everyone knows what to grab for these, I hope. Just the resources, place if you want, uh, UR prints if you want. And the, and the SR cat box as well. Co double ch cogs, always grab those. And gearbox up to you. Now let's talk about the limits. So, Chisa here. If you didn't get her to drop, unfortunately, and you want to fight for those uh, whatever points, grab her. She is a preload carrier. Very, very powerful. Um, one of the best ships you're going to get in terms of uh, shop value. Like a lot of ships nowadays, they're either really good or kind of meh. She's, in this case, Chisa is probably going to be one of the better ones out there. She is a budget Aquila. So if you guys don't have Aquila right here, um, she is a good substitute for those that do not have Aquila. She has that preload. Her stats are just a little bit better, but she doesn't have that skill that Aquila has right here, which makes her very, very powerful. So if you don't have Aquila, you want that preload carrier, then go ahead and grab that. It'll make your life easier for just PvE farming altogether. And give you that little boost of power for those that are trying to do a world 14 right now. Because preloads is really, really good in that world. Now, in terms of aux uh, auxiliaries, I will make a separate video for this. Uh, talking about each auxiliary in particular. Probably tomorrow or something. Uh, but the takeaway here is that these auxiliaries are primarily for Rika. So if you have Rika, these auxiliaries are primarily for her. Otherwise, if you guys don't have Rika, you don't care for Rika, you want to have something pretty good for auxiliaries. Um, I believe this gives firepower and evasion. This gives evasion. This gives torpedoes. And this gives anti-air. Now, the values for these aren't super high. I think my favorite gear um, out of these four is going to be the Battle Tracto. 
which gives about 25 firepower and plus uh, 10, 15 evasion at plus 10, which is going to be a really good slot to like large cruisers and heavy cruisers because you have that evasion and you have that damage. So this is my favorite auxiliary right here. Well, I'll talk about more about this tomorrow in my other video. But for now, if you guys don't have uh, any priorities to get Rika and you do have questions about the auxiliaries and you can't buy them all, uh, Battle Track though is going to be my favorite for this. And obviously we have the gear skins, right? So if you want gear skins, go ahead and buy those too. Now let's talk about the milestones. So milestones, usually I recommend people go for that uh, 50,000 points. Again, if you do want the UR prints for whatever reason, go ahead and go for that 50,000. Now obviously because we have that gold inflation in the game as of right now, a lot of people should be doing the gear, uh, coin researches in um, gear labs or whatever, or research academy. The, uh, the co uh, coin ones like G's, G's and D's or whatever that cost coins. Initially, a lot of people had that problem with coins. But now that we have so much coins nowadays, it's not that big of an issue anymore. So, if you are spamming coin missions a lot, you should be getting more uh, UR prints. It's debatable if you want to go for that 50,000 points. Because it's a 25 point gap from the second to last set of UR prints compared to the last set of UR prints. So if you really want to push for that uh, two UR prints, it's 25,000 points. That's about like what, 22,000 oil or something or 20,000 oil. That's a lot. And with 20,000 oil, you can easily get 120,000 coins with it. And 120,000 coins can fund for a lot of researches. And, and most likely, in 120,000 coins, you'll definitely be able to pay off for those two UR prints. Now... If you want to finish two prints earlier, because these are a free two UR prints on top of what you already have, if assuming you don't have coin issues, then go ahead and go for that 50,000 milestone. Otherwise, the uh, the milestones nowadays for me, I don't recommend going for 50,000 anymore. I do recommend, however, stopping at 30,000. The new milestone for me right now at stopping is going to be the 30,000 points because of cog chips. If you are if you are at that stage of the game where you lack cog chips, then 30,000 points is going to be a good stopping point. Now, some of you guys have like an abundance of them, so you shouldn't be worrying about it. But be very weary because if you are playing the game a lot, you are farming that World 12 a lot, then if you notice that significant drop in cog chips, then I would start worrying about it right away and start stocking up on those cog chips. So 30,000 points is what I recommend as a new stopping point for people that want to do the bare minimum for events nowadays. 30,000 points. This also nets you uh, almost all the UR prints aside from that last set of uh, UR prints at 50,000 points. So, and 30,000 points is going to be the last set of cog ships. So, go ahead and stop there. That's what I recommend for you guys. So, I believe that's everything for this event that I have covered already. It is pretty good for early game players, mid game players, end game players. It's up to you. Gear skins are always limited, especially for a collaboration. So, if you want those gear skins, go ahead and grab them. And auxiliaries, I'll talk about them tomorrow. And because of the um, new oil changes to event farming and whatnot, it is cheaper uh, compared to um, prior events because of the gap at or uh, the cap at 160 oil versus like 180, 200 oil that people were doing before is cheaper. And you can use more ships, so you get more EXP overall. And a new milestone for me nowadays is going to be the 30,000 points. If you don't want to go for the 50,000, that's up to you. But I recommend that if people are going to do the bare minimum, go ahead and go for that 30,000 uh, milestone stop. So, hope that answers all questions for you guys. If you have any concerns, leave them in the comments for me and I'll respond to them maybe or someone else will respond to them. And I'll see you guys in the next video.